Hi everyone, it's Brenda with Happy Healthy Homemade, and today we're making my gluten-free steamed red bean buns. When I was developing this recipe, I really wanted a fluffy steamed red bean bun, just like the ones I remember eating growing up. Even though this red bean bun is gluten-free, it's not dense or heavy in the middle, and it's also not cakey. With the techniques I'm about to show you, you can achieve a fluffy, light, yeasty texture. The first step is to make a tangzhong, or water roux. This is a technique borrowed from Japanese milk breads to make the finished product light and fluffy. You definitely don't want to skip this step. I've tried this recipe without this step, and it makes a huge difference. Into a saucepan, add 50 grams of tapioca, and 100 grams of water. Give that a stir. Once everything is incorporated, bring it to the stove. Stir this continuously on medium heat. You can't walk away for a second or it will become lumpy. It's going to thicken from a milk-like consistency into a thicker paste, and then eventually it's going to become gummy and stringy like that. What you want to do is gather it with a spoon into a ball and then transfer it to a bowl. This is very sticky and gummy, but it's going to retain moisture without weighing down the dough and it's going to make our final product very fluffy. I tested the dough with and without this step and this is definitely important for getting the right texture in the end. Now, you will need six grams of neutral oil. 130 grams of white rice flour. 60 grams of water. Seven grams of yeast. Now you're gonna stir that together. This part can look a little messy. It's going to look clumpy and uneven, but with some kneading, it will form an even dough. And I think you'll like the result. Now that all the water is more or less absorbed, I'm going to move on to using my hands. You wanna be careful here. If you moved very quickly, the tangzhong could be very hot. So definitely make sure that you wait until it is cool enough to handle before doing this. And what I'm doing is rolling the new flour into the tangzhong, folding it over, and working as much of the new dryer material into it as I can. I know this is not how you would work a gluten full dough, but since we are Working without gluten, we do need a couple more techniques to make this work. After working it a little bit more, our dough ball has collected most of the dry material from the sides and it has become smooth. Now gather it into a smooth ball and we will let that rest. It's been 25 minutes. Let's take a look. Our dough ball has just about doubled in size and we're ready to fill it with some red bean paste. I've got this pre-made red bean paste. You can use a store-bought red bean paste, or if you want a really simple recipe with the Instant Pot and Vitamix, check the link in the description below. My red bean paste has been refrigerated for a while, so it is a little bit stiffer. If your red bean paste is more liquid, you won't have to do this. But if your red bean paste is firm like mine, what you'll want to do is divide it into sections and then gently roll each piece into a ball. This helps to remove the hard angles from the red bean paste that might poke through when you're forming your red bean bun. Now I'm going to split my dough into five even pieces. I dust my hands with white rice flour so that the dough doesn't stick to my hands. And this dough ball is currently 315 grams, so each piece will be around 60 grams, 60, yeah, 60 grams. I'm gently rolling these into little balls, and when I'm done, I'm going to dust my hands with a little bit of white rice flour so that we have less sticking going on. I'm rolling these very gently because I don't want to deflate the air. So I'm not pressing, I'm just gently forming. 
I've got little pieces of parchment paper ready to go. I'm gonna dust a little bit more white rice flour. And I'm going to take each piece of dough, gently form it into a ball, and then gently stretch it out into a pancake. I'm not pressing here, I'm just forming the edges a little bit. You can already feel that it's a lightweight, fluffy dough. I put it like this in my hand, place the red bean, and I work the edges towards the top to close. And as much as I can, I'm trying to keep the entire bun even and not have thicker parts. And then pinch to close. I form it a little bit more in my hand, trying to get the surface to be even around the red bean bun. Then I place it on a piece of parchment. Now I'm going to place everything in a steamer basket and make sure they have enough room to keep rising. So I've got my buns in a steamer basket now. None of them are touching and they have enough room to continue expanding without being disturbed. If you see any little cracks or bubbles that you don't like, now is a good time to fix them. You can press them with your finger and if that isn't enough, you can get a little water on your finger and use that to smooth out any cracks as well. I'm covering this with a wet cloth again and we'll be back in 30 minutes. It's cold in my house today, so I let these go a little bit longer, about an hour. You can put these in a proofer or a warm oven to speed up the process as long as it's not too hot. Let's take a look. Now these have puffed up quite a bit. They're about 40% bigger than when I put them in here. So they're ready to go in the steamer. I've got my enamel cast iron pot, some water inside that's now coming to a boil, and I'm just gonna put this steamer on top. Be careful here, because the steam is hot and it can burn your hands. Now we're going to let that steam for 10 minutes. It's been 10 minutes. I'm gonna turn off the stove and take these off of the steamer. Wow. Beautiful. Unlike gluten-full red bean buns, you can lift the lid as soon as it's done steaming. They won't collapse in. You do want to let them cool off a little bit before digging in because they're hot. And when they're hot, they also stick to the parchment paper a little bit more. So we'll just wait for these to cool down a little bit. Meanwhile, I'm gonna make a coffee. Just taking it off the wrapper. Here we go. It's so fluffy and airy. Mmm. Mmm. I love that I used my own red bean paste because it's not overly sweet. And this is the perfect accompaniment to my latte. The texture is perfect. It's not dense. It's not cakey. It's not toothy. It is fluffy and airy. I hope you get to make this at home. For more recipes like this, make sure you ring the bell, smash the like button, and I'll see you next time. Enjoy!